This is a quick review of triangles and triangle vocabulary typically covered in a geometry course. Triangles are usually labeled with uppercase letters denoting the vertices. We refer to the point as point A and to the angle as the angle at A as discussed in TR-01. The triangle itself is referenced with this triangle symbol followed by the labels of its three vertices, triangle ABC. The sides of the triangle are labeled with the lowercase letter of the opposite angle, so the side opposite angle A is labeled lowercase a. For this triangle, these sides would be lowercase b and lowercase c. The sides can also be referenced using the line segment notation, where the endpoints of the side are used in the label. Line segment BC is the line segment connecting points B and C, which is the same as side A. The interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. This is very important. Every triangle has interior angles that add up to 180 degrees, or pi radians. There are two ways to categorize triangles. First, we'll cover categorization by angle, specifically the triangle's largest angle. When the largest angle is obtuse, the triangle is an obtuse triangle. Since the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, a triangle can have at most one obtuse angle, and the other two angles will be acute. When the largest angle is a right angle, it's a right triangle, which we covered in TR-02. The other two angles will be acute. When the largest angle in a triangle is acute, in which case all three angles will be acute, it's an acute triangle. Every triangle is either obtuse, right, or acute. Right triangles are special, and we'll use them a lot in trigonometry. There's a special name for the longest side of a right triangle, hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle always the side opposite the right angle. The word hypotenuse is reserved for right triangles. If a triangle isn't a right triangle, it can have a longest side, but it isn't called the hypotenuse. Since the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, the acute angles in a right triangle must be complementary, meaning they add up to 90 degrees. The second way to categorize triangles is by the number of congruent sides. When all three sides of a triangle are congruent, it's an equilateral triangle. It could just as easily have been called an equiangular triangle because all the angles are also congruent. Since they must sum to 180 degrees, then each angle in an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. This means all equilateral triangles are similar to each other because their angles are always the same. We'll review similar and congruent triangles in the next video, TR-08. When no sides of a triangle are congruent, it's a scalene triangle. A scalene triangle is a triangle whose sides are all different lengths. When two sides of a triangle have the same length, the triangle is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles have some special vocabulary. The two congruent sides are called legs, and the third side is called the base. The pair of angles adjacent to the base, that is, opposite from the congruent legs, are called base angles, and base angles are always congruent. This is the base angle theorem, that the angles opposite congruent sides of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Equivalently, if you're ever told or can show that two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles will also be congruent. The angle opposite the base is called the vertex angle. Please note that base does not mean bottom. This isosceles triangle could be oriented like this, and the parts would still be labeled as shown. A triangle is either isosceles, equilateral, or scalene. So we can combine the two methods of categorization to give descriptive names to different types of triangles. An acute scalene triangle has no congruent sides and all congruent angles. A right scalene triangle has a right angle and no congruent sides. An obtuse scalene triangle has an obtuse angle and no congruent sides. An acute isosceles triangle has two congruent sides and an acute vertex angle. A right isosceles triangle has two congruent sides and a right vertex angle.
An obtuse isosceles triangle has two congruent sides and an obtuse vertex angle. Equilateral triangles are in a category by themselves. There's no such thing as a right equilateral triangle since an equilateral triangle can't have any 90 degree angles because they're all 60 degrees. And for the same reason, there aren't any obtuse equilateral triangles because when all the angles are 60 degrees, none of them can be obtuse. You might think there could be an acute equilateral triangle, but since all the angles are always acute, the acute adjective doesn't give any additional information. So they're just called equilateral triangles, even though all the angles are acute. One last topic. Isosceles triangles are popular with trig instructors for word problems involving their angles. If you know the vertex angle or the base angle of an isosceles triangle, you can figure out the other angles by knowing that the three angles sum up to 180 degrees. For example, given an isosceles triangle with a vertex angle of 30 degrees, what's the measure of the base angles? If we let beta equal the measure of the base angles, we have 30 degrees plus 2 beta equals 180 degrees. This becomes an algebra problem, not really a trigonometry problem. Subtract 30 degrees from both sides, 2 beta equals 150 degrees, so beta equals 75 degrees. What if we're told that each base angle is 10 less than twice the vertex angle? What are the three angles in this isosceles triangle? It sounds more complicated, but again, it's just algebra. Let alpha equal the vertex angle. The base angles are each 2 alpha minus 10 degrees because they're 10 degrees less than twice alpha. We end up with alpha plus 2 alpha minus 10 degrees plus 2 alpha minus 10 degrees equals 180 degrees. So 5 alpha minus 20 degrees equals 180 degrees. 5 alpha equals 200 degrees. So alpha, the vertex angle, must be 40 degrees. We're told the base angles are 10 degrees less than twice this angle, so they must each be 70 degrees. And it's easy to check our work because the sum should be 180 degrees. 40 plus 70 plus 70 equals 180. These types of problems are common on tests because your instructor can check your knowledge of two things at once, the base angle theorem and that a triangle's interior angles sum up to 180 degrees. In the next video, TR-08, we'll review similar and congruent triangles.